Hi, my name is Robert Steranek, I'm from Fedevel Academy and in this video you are going to design a board in Altium Designer. Yes! If you like, okay? If you like, you can follow this video because it is step-by-step -step video. Uh, when you follow everything what is inside of this video, by the end of this video, you will design a board. This video is for everyone who never designed any board in Altium Designer. Uh, so it is, for example, for uh, students who would like to learn Altium because uh, they would like to find a good uh, job in future. Or uh, this video is also for hobbies who would like to learn uh, how to design boards. In Altium Designer, uh, usually simple boards, but some hobbies they design really, really complex boards. You would be surprised. And this video is also for uh, everyone uh, who maybe used to work in different CAD software and now they need to move to Altium. So even for uh, experienced hardware design engineers, uh, even experienced hardware design engineers may find this video useful. I'm creating this video also uh, for everyone who used to work in a previous Altium designer version and uh, who found it kind of frustrating uh, trying to uh, follow some documentation or YouTube videos or courses which were created based on the previous version of Altium uh, Designer. Uh, some, sometimes uh, some of the features in this new black version of Altium Designer, they are kind of hidden or some buttons were moved. So, you know, this video can help uh, even the people who used to uh, who used to work in the previous version of the Altium Designer and would like to move to this new version. So, uh, what exactly we are going to do in this video? We will create a new project. Inside of this project, you will draw a schematic. So, you will learn how to draw a schematic. You will learn how to create the components. So, you will learn how to create the schematic symbols. These are used in the schematic and they are here in this schematic symbol library. You will learn how to create schematic symbol library. You will learn also how to create footprints in a PCB footprint library. These are then used in your PCB. Uh, you will learn how to create variants uh, of your board. This is the way how to specify which components are fitted and which are not fitted on your board. Then uh, you will also learn how to create a PCB, of course. And we will uh, generate or we will learn how to generate the output from our board. For example, how to generate a PDF with uh, your schematic for specific variant. You can see it here. We will also generate a 3D PDF of your board. This is really, really cool. So you will know how to create a 3D model of your board. Uh, you will learn how to create different kind of outputs from your PCB. For example, how to create uh, something like this in case you would like to make this PCB at home. You need to generate something like this. And we will also learn how to create the documents which can be useful or which are used in professional documentation like this. This is called assembly drawing and here you can see position of the components on your board. And this is assembly drawing for specific variant. You can see these components are not fitted. Here is another uh, way how you can uh, print uh, assembly drawing. So this is different way how to create assembly drawing. Uh, we will generate Gerber files. These are the files which you need to send to your PCB manufacturer to manufacture your PCB. And we will also learn how to create bombs, uh, professional bombs, bill of material with a list of all the components which are used on your board. And you can see in this bomb there will be all the information about the components, for example, where you can buy them and how much they are going to cost you. 
So this is the price for the board. All this we are going to learn from this video. So uh, I really hope you will like it and enjoy. Start Altium Designer. Now left click on File, New, Project, PCB Project. Left click. Right click on PCB Project 1. Save Project S. And find the location where you would like to save your new project. I'm going to save it into D. Fedevel Academy, LED YouTube project, and I'm going to call it LED project. Save. So we have created our new project. Now we are going to add some uh, files. Right click on LED project, add new to project, and uh, left click on schematic. This is, this is going to be our schematic page. Right click on light project, add new to project, left click on PCB. This is going to be our PCB file. Uh, right click on light project, add new to project. We also need schematic library, so left click on schematic library. Now go down here, can you see my cursor? And left click on projects. Right click on light project add new to project and left click on PCB library. This is going to be our PCB library. Again, go down here and left click on projects. In case you cannot see some of these uh, panels or some of these tabs, which I will be using in this video, then uh, go into this bottom right corner and left click on this panels button. Can you see this panels button here? So left click. Here you can enable and disable some of the panels and some of the windows. So if I would like to hide this projects panel, which is here, I just left click and it's gone. See, I cannot see the projects uh, tab here. If I would like to enable it, simply left click on panels and left click on projects and it's back. We are going to save the files which we have created. Right click on uh, schematic page, save as. Uh, check the directory or the location of our project and save it like let save right click on PCB save as check the directory I'm going to call it let save right click on PCB lib save as Check the location. I'm going to call it let underscore PCB lib save. Right click on uh, schematic uh, symbol library. Save as. Check the location and I'm going to call it let underscore sahalib save. We are going to create our very first schematic symbol. Double click on LED Sahalib. Uh, left click on panels. And left click on part search. We are going to adjust some settings. So left click on this wheel which is here. Uh, I'm going to enable the location USA. I have all these currencies enabled and here I uh, I'm only going to enable DigiKey. So we are going to work with the database which is from DigiKey. If you like you can enable also some other but in this video we are going to work only with DigiKey. Press OK. Go to Google and search for DigiKey. Left click. Now let's have a look what we are designing. So this is the schematic what we are designing. This is the final schematic. And first component what we are going to create is this header which is here. So in the DigiKey we need to search for header 2.54 millimeters. 
left click on rectangular connectors, headers, mail pins. We are going to use Molex, which is in stock and which has a 3D model. Apply filters. Number of positions, two, number of rows, how many? One. It's board to cable wire, through hole, apply filters. And here it is. So this is the connector what we are going to create. Left click. Copy the digikey part number. You can select this and press right click. Copy. Or you can just press this uh, copy button which is here. Left click. Go back to Altium. Right click. Paste. Don't forget press enter on your keyboard. Here you will see a list of the components which were uh, found and uh, this looks like the connector which we would like to add into our library. So left click on this connector, scroll down and double check if you can buy this connector in one piece. All the components which we are going to add into our project, uh, we need to be able to buy them in one piece. So double check if there is price for quantity one. This is OK. This is exactly the connector which we would like to add into our library. Uh, right click on this connector and uh, select this import into LED Sahalib. Left click. Now left click to close this window. Let's go into our schematic library. Left click on this schematic library tab. Here are all the components inside of our library. This is the component what we have just uh, imported. Left click on this properties panel. Left click to pin the panel. This panel is very useful. We will use it a lot. When we imported this uh, component, we also imported parameters. Left click on, on these parameters. And you can see uh, this component already includes information about the supplier, supplier par number and a lot of other information which we don't have to manually write. All this was imported directly from the DigiKey. Left click on General tab, uh, left click on this text and we would like to hide it. Do not delete this text, okay? Hide it. Just left click here. Next time when we will import this uh, new component, we will automatically hide this text. I will then tell you when uh, we will be doing this. I'm going to zoom and we are going to draw the schematic symbol. Left click on place, left click on pin. To zoom in, press control on your keyboard, hold it down and use mouse wheel. To move or to pan the canvas, press uh, right button on your mouse, hold it down and move the mouse. Uh, we would like to change the pin number and pin name. And we are going to do it here in this properties panel. If you would like to move cursor to properties panel, you can see now the canvas is automatically moving. So what you need to do, you need to press tap on your keyboard. This canvas is paused or paused. Now you can go to properties panel and you can change designator to one and you can change the name to one. Uh, go back to canvas, left click on this pause button and place this uh, pin. Left click, left click. Press escape to cancel this pin placement mode. Before we continue, I'm going to change some uh, system settings so it's a little bit easier to work with Altium. Left click on this wheel here uh, to start the setup system preferences panel. Go to system, mouse wheel and I'm going to uncheck this. So now when I use mouse wheel, it will automatically zoom in, zoom out. I don't have to hold the control button. Then go to schematic. Uh, 
graphical editing and uncheck enable auto pan. This means uh, if I will be, for example, in pin command and I would like to change some settings in these properties panels, I can do it. The canvas will not move automatically. I don't have to use the tab button. So disable this and also do exactly the same in this PCB editor general and we don't want to use uh, this auto pan. Okay, so now you can use mouse wheel to zoom in, zoom out. And uh, if you go and if you run uh, or if you are inside of a command, for example, place pin, you can directly go to this uh, properties panel and the canvas is not going to move. You don't have to use the tap button. Escape or uh, press right button on your mouse to cancel the current command. We are going to make one more change. We are going to adjust the color of the grid because we would like to see the grid very nicely. Right click somewhere in the canvas, left click on preferences, go to schematic, left click on grids, left click on grid color, left click on standard and left click here. Okay. Do not change these grids. Uh, many people they have problems because they play with the grids. Leave this default, press OK. Now the grid is a little bit better visible. Be sure that when you place the pins, this uh, end of the pin which has this uh, white small square here, it has to be placed on this grid. OK, this one and also this one. It's very, very important. Click on view and fit all objects. Left click on the pin number one, change the name to plus, press tap on your keyboard, left click on pin number two, change the name to minus, press tap on your keyboard, press the uh, left button on your, on your mouse, hold it down, select these two pins, and be sure the pin length is 200 mils. If it's different, like for example 300 mils, then you can just uh, rewrite it, okay? Change it to 200 mils, press tap. Uh, left click on place, left click on rectangle, uh, zoom out and notice uh, the grid which we are using. Notice the cursor is moving in very small grid. If you have a look down here, this is what will tell you what grid you are currently using. The grid is 10 mils. If you press G or press G on uh, your keyboard, G like grid, this uh, grid number will be changing. Have a look. See, it's now 50 and cursor is moving uh, a little bit differently and press G again and it's, the grid is now 100 mils. This is what we would like to use. Left click here, left click here, uh, right button to cancel this command. We would like to move this into back. So press uh, left click on edit, move, send to back, left click on this yellow square and right click to cancel this command. We are going to set designator, change this to J question mark and we would like to also change the comment. Use uh, one X2 header. Uh, these two uh, properties, they are used in the schematic. If you have a look into Finish Schematic, so this is the uh, comment, which you can see here, and this is the designator. The question mark will be replaced by numbers. Uh, left click on parameters, and here we would like to add our own parameters. Sometimes you would like to add your own parameters, uh, which you can, for example, then use in a bomb bill of material a little bit later. You will see, okay, by the end of the video, you will see how these parameters are used. We would like to add category parameter, so left click on add and change this to category. I'll go to DigiKey and copy this uh, category from this component. Right click, copy, go back into Altium and uh, change this value to connectors. Don't forget to make this uh, new category parameter invisible. Left click on this I and press save. 
go back to DigiKey and the next component what we are going to create is this uh, 360R resistor. So right click uh, open a new tab and in DigiKey search for 0805 resistor 300 oops 360R enter left click on chip resistors uh, we are going to use Vishai 1% uh, in stock with 3D model left click on apply filters and this is the resistor what we are going to use left click copy the digikey part number just left click here go back to Altium left click on panels left click on part search and uh, after we import our parameters we don't want to see the par number here so left click on these settings and uh, uncheck this we don't want to have it visible okay now uh, left click here right click paste and enter to search for our resistor left click on the first one and uh, you can see we cannot buy it in quantity one so left click on the second one this is good one right click import into our schematic library left click and left click to close left click on place left click on pin change designator to one press tab tab change the name to one press tab uh, we would like to change also the pin length so left click and change this to 100 and press enter on your keyboard if you would like to rotate the pin press spacebar 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 and place the pin like this left click spacebar spacebar left click escape zoom in and uh, be sure that the side of the pin with the white square this one can you see it here it is placed outside of the symbol so here is going to be the resistor symbol this side of the pins with the white square they have to be outside of the symbol and they need to be placed nicely on the grid i can't stress this enough many people they get uh, off-grid errors or warnings because they don't place these pins correctly so that's why I'm explaining it here now we would like to hide this designator and the pin names so uh, left button on your mouse hold it down select the pins hide this left click on place uh, left click on line at this moment the color is set to black so left click on this color left click on blue we would like to use blue color and uh, left click to start drawing our uh, symbol at this moment the grid is set to 100 mils we would like to use something a little bit smaller so watch down here press g on your keyboard change it to uh, grid 10 mils zoom in and uh, use spacebar to change uh, how the line is drawn so spacebar spacebar watch this y position of the cursor we would like to have it uh, 30 mil y 30 mil left click now uh, y should be uh, minus 30 mils left click uh, if you make mistake for example if I left click here and if you would like to uh, go a little bit or one step back just use uh, backspace on your keyboard okay see if I click wrongly I can always go and use backspace so uh, again watch the Y position we would like to use Y 30 mil like this left click left click left click right click to cancel the uh, drawing the current line and right click to cancel the drawing uh, command 
left click somewhere into empty space to unselect this line uh, change designator to R question mark change command to 360 R left click on parameters and we are going to add the category parameter left click on add left click write category go to digikey and copy this uh, category from here right click copy go back to Altium left click Ctrl V and uh, don't forget to hide this uh, parameter we don't want to see it here in the symbol and press save go to digikey right click open in new tab uh, we are going to find green LED for our project and then we will create symbol for this green LED just write the let 0603 enter uh, let indication we are going to use Panasonic in stock with a 3D model and we would like to use green LED apply filters uh, left click uh, this is not good one because we cannot buy it in one piece so let's go back and left click on this second one this is the LED what we are going to use copy the digikey part number left click go back to Altium left click on panels left click on part search left click right click paste enter left click uh, this is not the good one left click uh, this is the correct one right click import into our let sahalip left click and left click to close left click on place left click on pin change designator to one press tab tab change the name to one enter press spacebar to rotate uh, press G change the grid left click press spacebar to rotate and uh, place it like one two three four left click right click view fit all objects press left button on your mouse hold it down select these two pins uh, hide the pin names left click on this eye now uh, left click on place left click on line left click left click right click left left right left left right left and uh, change the grid press G on your keyboard and watch the Y position here we would like to place uh, this on Y 40 mils left click right click right click to cancel the drawing command left click on place and we are going to draw the triangles so left click on this polygon change the border to small and change the filling color to be blue left click and left click on the blue color uh, left click somewhere here if you like you can change the grid so press G to change the grid left click left click right click perfect left click change the grid press G uh, and again watch the uh, Y position or maybe watch this this is much better now so DX and DY we would like to use uh, 40 mils DX 40 mils perfect and uh, we would like to use DY 40 mils left click right click right click 
press left button on your mouse, hold it down and select this arrow. Now right click, copy, right click, paste and place it somewhere here, left click. If uh, you would like to select more objects, but one by one, then uh, select the first one, for example, let's say we would like to select this triangle, just left click somewhere here, and then we would like to select also this uh, line which is here. So press shift on your keyboard, hold it down and uh, left click on this line. If you would like to add more uh, objects into this selection, again press shift, hold it down and left click for example here. In case uh, you, for example, make mistake and you would like to unselect this one object, then press shift, hold it down, left click and left click again. Okay, so you need to basically twice, you need to click twice on the object to unselect it. So press shift, hold it down, left click to select, press shift, hold it down, left click, left click to unselect. If you would like to move a selection, simply just hover cursor over this selected object, uh, press left button on your mouse, hold it down and just move it. Press escape to cancel command. Now left click on this general tab, set designator to D question mark, so left click, write D question mark, uh, change the comment, left click green, left click on this parameters tab, left click on add button, left click here, call it category, go to DigiKey, find categories, select opto electronics, right click copy, go back to Altium, left click control V, uh, make it invisible, so left click on this eye and don't forget to save. Perfect! We have created our schematic symbol library, so we have all the symbols which uh, we need for our schematic. And uh, before we start drawing the schematic, I would like to mention one important thing. Notice which of these pins is cut out for this schematic symbol of this uh, LED. Do you know which of this one is cut out? This pin, yeah, because here is this K. So this pin number one is cut out. Remember it because we will need this information when we will be creating footprint for this uh, LED. I will then uh, remind you. Uh, select this component number one. So left click here, right click and uh, delete. We don't need it, it's empty component. And save the library again. Click on projects and double click on this uh, LED schematic page. First we are going to place components into our schematic. Left click on this libraries tab. If you cannot see this tab here, left click on panels, left click on libraries. Uh, go up here, left click, select our library, LED schematic lib, left click. And here you can see the components, the schematic symbols which we have created. Description, headers, resistor, standard LED. So the first one is the header. If you would like to place component from the library into schematic, left click to select the component and uh, you can just double click to place the component like this or I will delete this. What you can do, uh, you can uh, press left button on your mouse, hold it down and you can just drag and uh, drop it into your schematic. Uh, zoom in, left click on the resistor, you can double click, press space bar to rotate the component, left click, press escape to cancel this current command, left click on the LED, you can press left button, hold it down, uh, drag the symbol, press space bar to rotate and you can place it, for example here, release the left button. If you would like to rotate components which are already placed in your schematic, 
uh, you need to select them first. So if you would like to rotate this resistor, left click to select it, then press space bar. Okay. If you just uh, uh, move the component, like when you press the left button on your mouse, hold it down, when you move the component, now if you would like to rotate the component, it's not going to work. If I press space bar, see, it's not working. You need to select the component, then you can rotate it, press space bar. We are going to connect all these components together. Left click on place and use this wire command. Uh, you need to use the wire command. You cannot draw lines. Okay? Only these wires will create electrical connection. You can use this wire command from the menu or you can find it also here in this active bar. So left click on this uh, place wire button, zoom out. Press the uh, right button on your mouse, hold it down to move the canvas. Left click to start drawing the wire, left click on this uh, pin. You can see this red cross when uh, your cursor is placed correctly on the electric point of the pin. So left click, left click, left click, left, 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 left click, left, left left and I'm going to draw also small wires up here and down here. Zoom in, left click, left. I would like to cancel drawing this line so press the right button on your mouse, go down here and again left click, left and cancel drawing this line, right click. OK, we can cancel the wire command, press right click again, and we are going to place the uh, power port, the plus 3.3 volt power port here and the ground power port here. Go down here and uh, left click on this properties tab, left click into canvas, zoom out a little bit, Left click to place and uh, we need to use this power port uh, command or you can use this active bar and uh, left click on this power port button here. So left click. Now we would like to place the plus 3.3 volt uh, power port first. So change the style, select bar, change the rotation, left click and select 90 degrees and uh, rename it. So uh, the name is going to be plus 3v3. OK, just a left click up here. Now uh, change the style to power ground, change the rotation to, 100, uh, to 270 degrees, change the name to ground, and uh, we don't want to have the name visible, so left click here, and uh, left click to place this power port. Right click to cancel the command, view, fit all objects. Now, when I hover cursor over a wire, you will see how this connection is called. So this is the net name of this connection. This one is plus 3v3 and this one down here, what do you think how it is called? GND. Yes. If you hover cursor here, this net, it has quite weird name, net D question mark underscore two. We would like to make it nicer. Yeah. So to name connection, just left click on place and use this command net label. Or you can find this command also here in this active bar. Just hover cursor over this button and use a right click on your mouse. Here it is. Now, because this command is very often used, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how, how you can customize this active bar, which is here. So we are going to move this net label up here on this first level, so we can directly uh, click on this button. Uh, simply uh, to customize this uh, active bar, simply just right click somewhere here, 
left click on customize find the uh, command here this is the active bar here so the command is uh, in the nets left click on this triangle now press the left button on your mouse hold it down and just drag and drop it somewhere here like this close see now the net uh, command is directly here just uh, left click on the net command uh, press spacebar to rotate uh, and left click to place it escape the command uh, we would like to rename it so just left click here and let's call it diode enter Now, just simply hover cursor over this wire and double check the new name. It's called Diode. Perfect. Uh, I would like to give you one really useful recommendation. Once you create this net name or once you create this uh, power symbol, never ever uh, create same symbol or never ever create same net name manually in your schematic again always copy and paste them so if i would like to use this plus 3v3 power symbol somewhere else in my schematic simply select it right click copy right click paste okay and use it in different place or you can use ctrl c ctrl v so you can select this net name ctrl c and then just ctrl v and place it on different place uh, what you can do you can also use a uh, very quick way how to copy uh, uh, symbols or names or anything what is selected you can just uh, press shift on your keyboard hold it down and uh, left button on your mouse hold it down and move the mouse this will automatically copy the objects where you click or if you have more objects selected selected press shift hold it down everything will be automatically copied okay so you have more ways how you can how you can copy and paste uh, objects uh, in your schematic what is important once you create the power symbol once you create this uh, net name always copy and paste it do not write it manually because i have seen many mistakes when people make a, you know mistake when they make typo in the net name and then the nets are not connected correctly our schematic is ready and uh, what we are going to do now we are going to create footprints for these components footprint is the physical interpretation of the component footprint will be used in our pcb and uh, why we are creating the footprints now uh, very often i create footprints after my schematic is finished because uh, usually when uh, i'm drawing schematic uh, very often i try different uh, components and uh, different circuits very often i delete some of the components uh, during the design during the schematic design process and i don't want to spend the time creating footprints for components which i'm not going to use in my final board so usually i create footprints after i'm happy with the schematic so i only create the footprints for the components what i'm really going to use on my board uh, our schematic is ready so we can create the footprints